Welcome to the new weekly outlook, everybody. So as always, let's go ahead and start off with some fundamentals and then move on to the technical side with Stefanos. Absolutely. Let's hop right into it. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Let's uh, review this NFP week. Absolutely. So first, I'm going to go over, you know, just some like macro news, some uh, geopolitical stuff, what's going on around the world. And then I want to touch on what happened at the Jackson Hole conference last week. Uh, which is also very important. We saw how the markets reacted right before they closed out on Friday. So just a quick recap of that and pretty much what do we have going on when it comes to some of the major central banks and then finally the economic calendar. So starting off with first the European energy. So we have the U.S. Uh, kind of being concerned, but also we had news that uh, the EU officials were going to step in and they're going to try to you know, kind of figure out what to do because now they're starting to get some fear that going into winter, they might not have enough energy. And because of that, the anticipation of, you know, not having enough energy, having low supply for it, the demand is starting to increase, which is also kind of translating into the soaring power prices. So uh, what the U.S. did back in March was they created this special task force uh, with the EU that was focused on expanding energy suppliers to the European nations. Um, and they did that back in March and they're going to continue moving forward with this. So they've been doing this for the past couple of months, right? Pretty much the US. And then you also had a lot of other nations who kind of stepped up and who were helping EU, UK included, uh, with these energies, uh, energy, energy supplies in general. So what they're trying to do is they're going to continue to work with distributors and energy companies around the world. And they're going to try to alleviate whatever shortages that might be in place. Again, remember that there is no way in the next couple of months, I'm talking about in like the next four months or so, uh, that just the U.S. or just the U.K. will be able to come together with the EU and account or, you know, alleviate the 40 percent that Russia was able to provide to EU over the past couple of decades. There's no way that you can do that. But can they do it at uh, enough supply level where they can start to bring down these prices, uh, which are pretty much impacting the cost of energy, the cost of gas, and also uh, the cost of living overall in the entire United Nations? This is very important because this is pretty much coming back down to the necessities, right? Some of the things you need energy, you need gas in our day to day for a lot of the things that we do in order to survive, right? And now as that translates into inflation, of course, increases in prices is going to translate into inflation and then also uh, the style or uh, the living conditions of people in the European uh, nation in general. That's going to be very, very important going into the next couple of months to end out the year. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to Jackson Hole here. So pretty much what happened is that central bankers across the board agreed they're going to continue to increase interest rates. So every year, whenever there's a Jackson Hole conference, there's always a different topic. And also uh, the people who come to the Jackson Hole, Jackson Hole conference for the most part are always switched out. So these are new academics, new economists, uh, new people who are representing financial organizations. And then of course you have the central bank officials who are there, they kind of tend to switch out, right? Um, of course, if you're the central bank head and you're kind of uh, fulfilling your term, you're always gonna be there. But I'm talking about the economists, the academics, and things like that. So every year there's a new topic. And this year the topic was around inflation and also uh, what is going on with the pandemic, right? Everything that was impacted by the pandemic, which led into this inflation. So we're talking about the global supply chain issues, right? And then the pandemic itself. And what does that do, uh, do to an economy in general? So the econ a lot of the economies are shut down. They start to open up. There's a lot of uncertainty that's happening in general across different sectors of the economy, right? Um, how did that translate into inflation? What can we do to combat that inflation? What have we already done to combat that inflation? And here, the sentiment that all the central bank officials have put out is we're going to continue to increase interest rates, and even if it does damage, and they also agreed and openly said the fact that this inflation and this recession, which is being caused by you know the inflation, but also increasing interest rates and the fear in the markets, it's here to stay for a quite some time, right? It's not what they're calling temporary anymore, um, but it's going to be around for a couple of you know years or so. I'm talking about like two years or so. It's going to take you that long to kind of recover from this. This was already said by Bank of England's governor, 
Governor Bailey already said that openly last time when they had interest rate hikes, that the recession is going to be there and it's going to be there for a very long time. And they're going to try to combat that. And then when we look at other central bank officials, for example, Powell, he did not openly say that before this Jackson Hole conference, but the sentiment was already there. Looking at the economic data that was coming out and also the sentiment in the business sect sector and then also the consumers. So that's pretty much what all the central banks are going to be doing, you know, going into the end of the year and also early next year, which is just continue to increase interest rates and also shrink down their balance sheets, which they have expanding, would have been expanding since 2020 when the pandemic hit. So this week, what the Fed is pretty much ramping up to do is decrease and unload their treasury bills uh, that started amassing almost three years ago. So back in like 2020. So as a part of its plan, it's going to reduce its $9 trillion portfolio, and it's going to boost its monthly caps for the amount of treasuries and holdings of mortgage-backed securities that it's going to let mature to about $60 billion and $35 billion, respectively. So basically what's happening here is you're moving from those accommodative policies into contractionary policies where they're going to take all these different steps to decrease the money supply in the economy and pretty much make your dollar a little bit more expensive. So when you are in accommodative policies, you have low interest rates, your money is cheap, right? Um, your purchasing power starts to decrease, but when you start to contract the uh, money supply in an economy, you start to move into contractionary policies, you start to see your dollar you know, gaining some, some uh, strength. And then when you go on to ECB, pretty much they're doing the same exact thing, but the ECB here also has been getting a lot of, um, you know, pushback from, I would say, consumers and businesses in general and citizens in general in, in the entire European Union because they have been quite slow when it comes to increasing interest rate hikes. And it's not because, you know, they were just, just didn't feel like doing it. It was also because they were facing a lot of different issues at that time. So you have, uh, you know, the war going on, Ukraine and Russia, and they were, all, obviously, the European Union was already affected by that when it comes to energy, when it comes to gas, uh, you know, and then also when it comes to inflation, you start to see massive inflation, uh, the pandemic, a lot of the economies were opening up, a lot of the economies are shutting back down, right, so combating all of that. But here, uh, finally, they start to increase interest rates, they're trying to combat this inflation, they still have this fear of, uh, you know, energy not being enough for people in the next coming months when it comes to winter, and how are you gonna combat that, right? So there's a lot of mixed sentiments when you look at uh, Europe as a whole. So here, they're gonna continue to increase interest rates like the Fed is, like the Bank of England is, and they're uh, entertaining this discussion of, is it just going to be a half basis point hike or is it going to be up to a 75 basis point hike? So that's what's to watch out for this week. Now we're gonna move on to the economic calendar. So start off quite easy this week. We had a bank holiday, holiday from the UK. You have the FOMC member speaking, not too much coming out today, right? You have the unemployment rate coming out in about two hours or so from Japan, but that's pretty much it. Things start to pick up tomorrow. So tomorrow you're gonna have the German prelim CPI coming out, which is inflation. This is very important. Germany is the largest economy in the European Union. So whatever happens there tends to have a trickling effect pretty much across all other nations. Then uh, you continue down into New York session, you got the jolts job openings, and you have the consumer confidence coming up. If this starts to drop down, then you will see this being reflected onto a lot of the USD pairs, and also when it comes to safe haven currencies and commodities. But the jolt, jolts job openings is going to give you a good understanding uh, when it comes to NFP on Friday. So pretty much take that into consideration, and what does that essentially mean and translate into when it comes to, uh, to the labor market. Then you have a ton of low impact news that you can pretty much watch out for. Again, I don't really expect these to have much of an impact uh, besides like the 30 minute time frame. So I would keep my focus on some of the higher time frames, like the hourly, four hour, and then uh, take a look at the 15 minute, 30 minute as the news is coming out to understand you know, what's the confluence. Going on to Thursday or Wednesday, you have CPI flash estimate coming out of Euro. And then you also have uh, the non-farm employment change from the US coming out. So again, this is to prepare you for NFP. 
So take a look at you know some of these low impact and high impact news that's coming out, even uh, medium impact. And this is pretty much the timing that you want to be trading around since there's gonna be a lot of volume, especially if you're scalping. Then continuing down onto Thursday, uh, you have a pretty good London session where you got some low impact news coming out. Pretty calm Thursday pretty much in general. Uh, not too much coming out when it comes to high impact news besides the manufacturing PMI. Uh, but other than that, you're pretty much getting ready for NFP on Friday, which is, again, going to be very important. And that's going to give you a good understanding of the labor market. The reason why NFP is very important and understanding the labor market is also very important is because it's one of those dual mandates of a central bank, which is maintaining maximum employment. We're already starting to see those dips, right, when it comes to labor markets, because when you look at the micro level in the U.S. specifically, you're seeing a lot of major companies going through layoffs and also just pausing their recruiting processes. So this week, you got some good pockets of fundamentals. You got some good pockets of volume coming in. Try to keep your focus around that. Make sure you're not over trading or risking or anything like that. I want to pass it over to you now, Stefanos. Absolutely. It's a good way to put that. Good pockets of uh, volume that we're going to be getting. Um, let's start over with GJ over here. As you guys know, we'll start with the monthly. I like to keep those historical levels marked off. We have 160 here. That price has been bouncing off of. We have been rejecting 166 here on GJ, and we've just been ranging on the weekly or on the monthly and the weekly and the daily, right? It's just pretty, pretty garbage price action. Um, you have a lot going on right now in Europe, but also Great Britain. The economy is not doing too well right now. Um, Japanese yen has been on its way down, especially today. We've just been tanking over here, and you've seen a little bit of a pickup over here on on uh, on uh, GJ. But right now, again, it's just ranging. I haven't touched GJ, and uh, I would say maybe since the beginning of last week, it just has not been good at all. Uh, moving into daily over here, daily, you could start to see you have that bearish trend over here since the all-time highs or, or the yearly highs up here around 168 730 we've just been making these lower highs over here but then also rejecting uh 166 right up here right but ever since then we've just been making these lower highs we've been holding that resistance right in this area as well right around 163 200 but we created this low now you're starting to see like you have this low created down here, starting to see a higher low over here and then a higher low over here. So we starting to change that structure where price is holding that support in here and then continuing back up. Again, this is all just one big range in here that you pretty much want to stay out of. It's, it's just very messy price action. But what we did get uh, today was a strong bullish candle close. So now is this next candle creating a bottom wick? Flipping bullish and continuing up into that 163, 200 area. I would even narrow that in actually, Stefanos, real quick. Uh, because on the daily time frame, you can see how price is pretty much tapping into a lot of these levels uh, you know, further down. So like right here. And then keeping these, you know, as potential targets for like those uh scalps or anything like that. And this is like, you know, you would do this on lower time frames, I'm hundred percent sure. Uh, mm -hmm. right. But when you look at the daily time frame and then even bring this up a little bit here, you can see how, how this is exact consolidation. Once price breaks out of this, expect a ton of volume to come in. Yeah, no, absolutely. There, there could be a nice move up here. Once we start to break resistance over here to continue up, I wouldn't say nice, but we'll see what we look like in the lower time frames. But yeah, like you said, I like to kind of wait till we get to those lower time frames to narrow in the levels, especially when you're consolidating like this. When right. you start, you know, drawing on the weekly and the daily. As a scalper, it I've just seen it kind of confuse other people. It confuses like beginner traders where now you're getting down to the one hour, the 30 minute, and you have all these different zones. So I just, I don't know. I was I was just trying to, uh, you know, keep it for those lower time frames. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to mark those levels off when we drop Absolutely. the lower time frames anyway. Yep. So. yep. But you do have a great point. You know, you have, uh, you know, a support right over here that we kind of like faked out over here. Yeah. You know, holding a support right in here. And then you have this resistance right here that if we break above, because you have these wicks over here, these wicks here, and then that resistance, once you break above that, can we get some kind of a short-term buy back up to that 163, 200 level? Right. So, right. So let's look at the four hour and see if we can narrow those zones in. 
See, this is what I was kind of breaking down for the team yesterday or today. You have this whole zone that we keep rejecting over here. Uh, Price probably wants to get back into that area, especially because, as you could see, since bouncing off of that area for the last time in that 200 area, we've been making these lower highs coming down into this area, right? Then all of a sudden you start to see this support hold and a nice bounce off that area, right? Then we come in again, create another higher high after reject, uh, you know, bouncing through this previous resistance over here, created this high up here, and then we came right back down, but kind of respected that low, broke below it, right? But it kind of like faked it out. I guess you could draw it like that, but gets a little messy like that. But what we've been doing is holding this support over here and the higher low in this area and bouncing up right now, right? So now you're starting to see that bullish pressure bouncing off the support, just like we did the last few times that we approached this area, right? We kind of faked that area out over here, but now you're starting to see the bullish pressure coming in. So right now, last four hour candle closed bearish. We ended up rejecting some kind of a level, but we right now we have a some kind of a support in here that could be holding. As you can mm -hmm. see, this current four hour candle is starting to flip bullish over here. Back at those pre the, this previous resistance over here, we created the high. Can we hold a support here and continue up from here? And can you catch that move? That's up to you, right? It's Asian on a Monday during NFP, end of the month. Do you want to trade in this? Or do you want to kind of just stay out and, and um, maybe trade that secondary pair that we always talk about? But maybe we have a quick scalp. We'll see. It looks like we possibly can over here where you have... Multiple rejections. You had a little fake out over here, but rejection right there with that wick, rejection right here, and then a rejection with this candle over here, but we finally broke above and closed above. So are we going to hold support here, and can we continue up to retest that high and possibly continue up even further? Uh, we have a resistance right here around that 162.800 level. Let's see. You got about 28 pips to that high. And they got about 45 back up to that resistance here with fairly clean moves here. And right here, if we get some volume tonight. Can this one hour candle close bullish? Next one, create a bottom wick and pass the high of those wicks. Can we continue up from there? Looking at the 30 minute, see, it, get, it gets a little tricky over here. It gets a little messy, but I can definitely see us retesting this high. Am I going to take this? I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll see how these candles close. And that's the number one thing I can encourage you guys to do is just wait for these candles to close. Wait for your setups. If this is not your setup, do not take it. Just live back test it and see how it plays out, right? That's how you start to learn and start to get more and more used to new setups and, uh, you know, back test them as well. And we'll journal those candle. trades too. As your life back testing it, you know, journal pretty much the setup. Yeah. So then you can trade the when it comes up uh, next time. Yep. You're not getting better if you're not journaling. You're not getting better if you're not reviewing your previous uh, performance. That you know, if, if you don't like the term journaling and it sounds like too much for you, or it's just like not your thing, just think of it as reviewing your previous performance and performance that you could be implementing into the market with new setups. Right? That's that's how every great in any kind of sport, business, anything. That's how they all get better. Right? So just that, that's how you, that's how you do it. All right. So. Looking at gold over here, again, since the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict kicked off, we retested those previous all-time highs around 2075. And then the Fed comes in saying that they're going to increase interest rates, which creates these lower lows and lower highs. We created that low right back down at 1680. We then retested this previous support over here to create a resistance and bounced off that key area. Right in there of 1800, I would say. And we just got that strong bearish candle close. Next candle closes a weaker bearish candle. This candle passed the low of that candle and is now retracing a little bit, right? So it's kind of a doji candle. Are we going to get some kind of a pullback into some of these areas? Are we going to even break back above that 1750 level that we always mark off? Um, or are we going to stay below it and continue down? Looking at the daily now. Daily today ended up closing a uh, strong bearish candle and rejecting 1750. It looks like we tried to come back above 1750, held a 
resistance at that previous support, all right? And then we ended up closing a strong bearish candle. This candle, we get the top wick, pass the low of that candle, continue down, passing these lows over here. But now we're starting to reject this support right in here, all right? So um, are we going to stay above that area? Are we just going to close the doji? The next one respects the high of it and continues down to fill that wick. Or are we going to actually reject the, this area down here and possibly consolidate until NFP or till maybe some of the data on Wednesday? We'll, we'll see what we end up getting here. But um, right now we are above that support. One thing I would do here as well, as Stefano is kind of going through the lower time frames, if you're new to trading and you're kind of trying to figure out uh, you know, the candle anatomy and things like that, on that daily time frame, mark off that bottom wick. And then look at what happened, um, you know, at that yeah. rejection. Yeah, make like a line or like a zone or, you know, whatever, uh, however you mark off your levels and take a look at what happened to the left on, you know, the daily time frame. Uh, look at what happened on the weekly time frame. Take a look at the four hour, yes. one hour, you know, things like that. And that's how you're going to learn and figure out what we always say is like liquidity zones or pockets of liquidity, you know, things like that. And you're kind of confused, you know, what, what do we mean by that? That's how you're going to find out what that is. And that's how you're going to figure out how to actually identify those levels um, on your own too. Absolutely. It's a great point. So yeah, we marked that wick off uh, like Sean was just saying, and we'll see what we look like in the lower time frames here. looks like you got a little fake out of that support over here, right? Strong daily candle or four hour candle close right back above that support. Uh, we come right back up to this level and it looks like we kind of rejected some kind of a level up here where you have a previous support price ends up tapping into that area and then closing a weak bullish candle in here, right? We are still bearish, right? Since tapping into 1800, 1810, we've been creating these lower highs over here. So could we be coming up into this area, possibly retesting this area again and then continuing down? Right now, we are kind of in a consolidation that we need to break out of and see if we could take anything back down or back up, as you can see here in the one hour. One hour right now is respecting this previous support with that wick, right? And then you get the resistance right over here where we keep rejecting this area. This candle tapped into that area, ended up closing bearish, and we keep failing to break above and close above that level right now. We have broken the previous support over here, but right now we are holding support in this area. So everything below this area, 1735, 800, you got some clean moves coming down that you could possibly be grabbing. Let's fix that a little bit. Again, you're seeing these lower highs being formed. You want to draw another trend line. I don't like to have too many trend lines, but you're seeing price just rejecting these areas multiple times. If we could break above this area, get a fairly clean move coming back up. But again, you're trading against the trend right now, along with you're trading against the fundamentals and the sentiment of the Fed coming out saying during the Jackson Hole Symposium that they were fully ready to continue to increase rates in September and then throughout 2023 just to combat inflation. That's their number one mission right now. So if that's the case, you're going to see stronger U.S. dollar uh, movement, and then you're going to see the uh, gold going down. 100%. And they said that they're going to continue doing that. Again, keyword here is going to be even if that there is any damage. So they, yep. you know, it's not that they don't care that, you know, the markets are going to be, yeah. um, you know, dropping or anything like that. It's just more of an understanding that we know that it, that's how it's going to react. But that's what we're going to continue to do because that's how we're going to be able to control inflation. Absolutely. So we'll see what we end up doing. I wouldn't be trading in this. You have like a, like a support right in here that maybe you want to wait for price to break below over here. Um, really depends on this price action over here. If we start breaking below that support, just don't get trapped in here on a Monday. You got plenty of news coming or economic data coming out this week. So uh, it's just not worth, you know, testing anything or forcing anything in ranges like this. You have a potential range in here. About 44 pips, maybe if you want to grab that. But I would really wait for that break and retest above here before taking that. But then also you got this move here that might make a little bit more sense where you can leave that runner in and continue down to 1720. And I fully anticipate us to break 1720 possibly this week and continue back down to 1700 over here. All right. 
So, so keep the focus on some of the higher time frames as you guys are trading. There is going to be a ton of consolidation this week. And again, that's because when you're looking at the economic data that came out, you know, last week we had a lot more impact. We had a lot more economic data coming out. And then, of course, the sentiment leading up to the Jackson Hole. And then this week you have, you know, not so much high impact data coming out. There is like a couple throughout the week kind of just sprinkled, but that's what you want to be trading if you're scalping. So make sure you guys are trading safe this week and not over trading, not trying to trade in consolidation, uh, especially if you don't have the confirmation from higher time frames. Oh, man. Absolutely. So do you want to do the live session this week on Friday for NFP? Yeah, we could do that. I mean, uh, I, I should be good. I mean, I'm always trading anyway, but I just want to double check. Um, yeah, Friday, we're good. All right, so we will see you guys for NFP on Friday. Do you want to do it should at 4.30 a.m. PST? Sure. All right, so it's going to be... Wait, we're going to... Yes, okay, so 7.30, okay. Yeah, so that will be an hour before right NFP comes out. Yep, absolutely. All so right. if you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, reach out to us on Instagram or YouTube, whatever you like, and, and we'd certainly be able to help you out. 100%. Have a great week, everybody, and trade Friday.